What if I told you that you may be wasting about 15 to even 40% of your cost in what is known as the hidden factory? That would be interesting to unhide, right? Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel where we talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. And today's video, it's about a concept known as the hidden factory, which is, well, it doesn't really tie into per se an improvement philosophy, but it really underlies most of what we know. It, it really ties in wonderfully with Lean. It's also a sort of a, a core base philosophy of Six Sigma. So it is an important topic to discuss. And the fun thing is one of my colleagues, so, so uh, a continuous improvement consultant, she told me that there's almost no good material on the hidden factory. Can't you make a video about that? So yes, of course. And this is a key concept to share. So we will not go into much calculation because this is more of a concept. Although in the statistics that were you know, made from mid 80s up until, well, until basically now, but sort of mid 80s till, till 2000s, a number of people have been calculating how much this could be. And the estimates range from about 15 to 40% of cost of goods sold, which of course is huge, right? So that is a hidden cost mostly. Now, some of these costs you will no, but others you will not. So let's get into that concept of the hidden factory. The basic premise is that you have your factory, right? You're producing goods. The factory makes you money. And then there is this hidden factory that costs you money. So what is the factory? Right? The factory is a bunch of processes and we make a product. And the thing is, when we're making that product, we're also having inefficiencies. Right? We're, we're losing stuff. And you know that. You know that from your own organization, uh, even if it's not a factory, if you're producing services or software or whatever, you know that any organization, any production sort of environment has its losses. For instance, we're scrapping part of our good production. Or the line broke down. Right, so we've got an OAE loss, we've got material loss. These things are pretty visible. And that is why, well, it's a bit of a discussion. Are they in the hidden factory or not? I would say they're not even really in the hidden factory, but we will be on the border here. And, and that's also why when you do a loss analysis, don't worry too much about if a loss is hidden or not. That's, that's not what this whole video is about. That's not what the concept of the hidden factory is about. There is a whole bunch of losses that are hidden from sight. That is what this is about. See, scrap you see, right? And breakdowns, you notice. When a line is not working for an hour or so, you notice. But will you also notice when an operator does a little bit of rework at their station? So something went wrong, they pick a product from the line, manually just a couple things maybe insert it before the machine get it through or they just fix it there but anyway they make some extra effort to correct something that went wrong in the process and it flows on i bet you the supervisor hardly knows that this is happening but definitely your production manager your accounting maybe even your quality department don't know that this is happening so you've got your hidden types of rework And with rework, that, that really is an insidious one, because what you will also see is the bit bigger rework. What I often see is that you put extra effort into it and then it's not really counted. So when we have scrap, you lose your material, you, just, you throw it away or you sell it at a discounted price to some side stream, but you know that there is a cost involved. You also know that you're not producing your product. But with rework, so, a lot of rework is really already happening at the job site. This example of an operator quickly correcting something, that is real. The examples of warehouse people taking off a label, replacing it with a new one because they spotted a mistake and they just do a couple of things to fix the problem, get it out of the door. But lots and lots of time spent in the process. And you also have 
sort of out of the process or really extra. So if you have a bad batch of products, you, maybe you have a process where you can even completely reuse the material, right? So you're uh, making some sort, of, some sort of pulp type of product where if it is not good, you can repulp the material and just mold it again. Right? Uh, many paper or concrete type of things will, will have this. Right? You, you put a part back in. Uh, you see it a lot in all kinds of toffee-like candies and, and stuff like that as well, right? Where you can just mix it back up into the, um, the raw material, more or less. But you have spent a lot of extra time on the machine, right? Extra time. You spend all of the wetting and drying energy that is used in your process. A whole bunch of things like that. Many companies hardly measure this part. Because they say, well, the rework is not a loss. Just put it back into the process. Even more insidious is when your product needs a little bit of starter. Right? Because then that's not a problem at all, right? Really not a problem at all. Uh, if, you, uh, if you make processed cheese, which is again in that cheese industry that I love so much, you need a bit of sort of old products or stuff that's already completely at the end. You need it to start the next batch. So if you would work in a processed cheese factory without any rework, you would have to on purpose tap some good product and use it in the next batch. Uh, so the factory manager said, that's, that's not a problem. We need to rework anyway. It doesn't cost us a thing. But then you are making actually more than the recipe needs. You are handling it. You're storing it. There is a part of it going away. Oh, there are so many hidden costs that go into rework. But also that go a lot into all kinds of documentation and work processes. Right? All your business process, your logistical stuff, your work processes, where even in production, you have two sets of specifications or two work instructions. Your operator doesn't really know which one they need to pick, so they just pick the one they like the most and run with that. Another operator picks another set of instructions and specifications, and you're making trouble. At the very minimum, you're asking too much of your people, right? They, they need to make all kinds of decisions and they're, they're not really certain and they just well, do something. But more likely, you're generating off specs by the actual spec, right? Or working in an inefficient way. But the same things go when you have uh, a lot of stock, generally not counted, but then you have to move the stuff everywhere and you have to manage it. You have a warehouse manager, all kinds of things like that. So many work processes. Those ones, they will, the thing is, you are not going to measure them, but they will drive up your cost. And also the bigger your company becomes, the more chance you have of these. Because at some point, you have a number of quality inspectors walking around because things went wrong previous times and we don't really trust the operators to do all the quality checks. So you've got a couple of people on the payroll that why are they needed? Well, because you are making rework, because you don't really control your process, because the operator doesn't really know what the quality is, uh, what the settings are, uh, how to do all the quality checks. You put extra people on there. You have people in customer services chasing after clients just to keep them happy when something is sent their way that, that wasn't right. Wrong documentation was added, no work processes, or even a wrong product, if you make a lot of rework and scrap, you will probably send a bit of that to your customer as well. So there's a problem. We mi mixed up some orders. Now we didn't send the client what they liked. Now customer service is chasing planning and production to quickly expedite their product. And that creates a lot of hassle in the factory. It introduces more inefficiencies, more chances for failure as well but it costs you time, it costs you efficiency. That is what the hidden factory does also with your work processes. So think of every time you have to correct errors. All those things, that is the hidden factory. That is the core philosophy of when you do an analysis of the effectiveness of your organization, and also the cost and your losses, and especially when you're looking at it with a lean sort of lens, the seven wastes 
eight ways. Uh, maybe for this, it even sort of fits in there. But the seven wastes, they really like this concept. You, you see how they link, right? One of the things that is uh, sort of the mother of all wastes in lean, overproduction, because it leads to overburdening, it leads to too much inventory, it leads to waiting at other lines. All of those things, those are the hidden factory. Those are when our work processes are not clear and aligned and error free. When we make errors so in material, when it's rework, but also in what we do to the product, the wrong labels, the wrong orders, the, we misplace things. That costs so much time and frustration. So what I would like you to do is when you have a lost analysis at quarterly, monthly, something like that, rather quarterly or yearly, something on that scale, not, not daily. You'll drive yourself crazy if you do this daily. But those sort of visioning moments, those analysis moments that, that make your, your company roadmap, your improvement plans, be very explicit about this. Really discuss it with operators, supervisors, support departments like quality and maintenance, planners, and have a very honest discussion about it. Right? If people say, well, that's just the way it is in this business, yes, but still describe it. Because it's not the way that it has to stay, not even in your business. That is the hidden factory with loads of costs. And this really can be all of this correction, all of these extra people added because your business process is just not aligned. All of those energies and machine capability drains due to rework that is not really scrapped so people don't feel that it is a problem. Uh, the little bit of extra product you give away, all of those things, they can amount to 15 to 40% of your costs. It's a lot. And it's generally on top of this. Uh, so the 40 percenters sort of take this into account generally, but uh, this is not a little bit. The problem is that this is usually spread out. It's very difficult to measure. So when you're starting your continuous improvement journey, you focus on this, get your process running well. Also, when you focus on OEE, then you will automatically focus on having good processes and having good processes that are well designed and where you know what all the settings are and what the outcome should be. That will also help you a lot in already getting rid of hidden wastes. So that's your first focus. But when you're into the program for a year or so, get this one, get that hidden factory into your scope and be explicit about it. So I hope that you liked that video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button, comment on how you have seen these things happen in your factory and go and improve and eliminate that hidden factory. For now, I wish you the best of luck checking how your factory is doing. And as always, don't forget to also enjoy the continuous improvement journey.